So this is probably the biggest announcement for BRICS that hits home personally for me. As of January 1, 2023, South Africa assumes the BRICS chairmanship. High-level meetings, conferences, and summits are being planned for 2023 here in South Africa. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Ashley. On my channel, Ashley in Africa, I talk about my experience moving, living, and doing business here on the continent of Africa. I share my experience of love, motherhood, and entrepreneurship, and I'm also the creator of the Africa Investors Academy, a community for entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, and investors who have an interest of building and growing their business here on the continent or and investing in projects to retire early. So if that sounds interesting, please be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can get more updates on what I will share next. And it seems like BRICS is a really interesting topic for my community and the growing community out there. So I wanna bring this information to you first. And I was so thrilled to hear about South Africa assuming chairmanship of the BRICS summit for 2023. So if anybody out here in South Africa, Johannesburg, Pretoria has a hookup or a plug, I would love to cover this event as an, econo as an economist from um, a media perspective for my YouTube channel or any other publication that is looking to get firsthand insight into what BRICS is doing here in South Africa and for 2023. So I want to update you on what this looks like for the BRICS economic conglomerate. For those who don't know and are new to this concept, please be sure to check out my five things you should know about BRICS um, video. I'll also be sure to link that below. And uh, BRICS is the economic conglomerate comprised of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. South Africa recently, or was the last country to formally join in 2011. And since then, BRICS has become somewhat of a BRICS plus organization as I continue to update you on different countries that are expressing formal interest into the BRICS system. And so um, as an update, as I mentioned, under the South African chairmanship, this block will continue in its work on sustainable development of the, of the, in the areas of economy, environment, and social reforms. And so this is not the first time that South Africa has assumed chairmanship. Originally, um, the first time South Africa had this position or held this position within the BRICS conglomerate was in 2018. And the work was positively received from the partners, right? And I believe that they saw the investment that and the upside of Africa, right? And who doesn't? Um, South Africa itself, I like to position for the global world and people who are outside of the continent and have never been to South Africa. South Africa is the 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 launch pad for business, the launch pad for commerce to the continent. It's essentially the proof of concept of the continent and showing that Africa can be um, forward leading, attract, attracting to global businesses. It can be and it is a major global metropolitan city with a high, high level talent and extreme exquisite um, access to tourism and honestly a sustainable and yet very high quality of life. South Africa indexes very high um, for the quality of life index for many Western countries and I'd say extremely high if not the highest um, for a country here on the continent. So the BRICS foreign ministers are meeting um, on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly. They expressed a full support for South Africa to chair this block in 2023 and to host this 15th summit. So um, the heads of agencies reaffirming their willingness to support and continue in cooperation. And essentially, as the chairman of the BRICS, uh, the BRICS summit, um, President Ramaphosa has said that his goal with this summit is to push the uh, agenda for Africa. And I quote, 
BRIC's high-level meetings are planned as well as ministerial meetings and numerous other events. Uh, this is actually said by the South African foreign minister. And for Ramaphosa, he says BRICS has an important role to play in providing leadership in the world. And his goal is to aim to improve the world's situation with Africa leading that charge. So huge, huge. There's going to be conversation around education, um, promoting how education will continue and continue to innovate, particularly on promoting accessibility and equity in education, which historically has been a challenge here on the continent um, with young girls having access to education. It will focus on accelerating the development of that quality of education and learning and encouraging exchanges amongst BRICS youth. So again, if anybody has the plug of the BRICS conference here in South Africa, I would love to cover this conference from an economic perspective as a media representative and any other blog companies, news media companies that have an interest in me covering that, please reach out to me via the email below. I would love to do that as well. Um, so yeah, I was really excited to hear about this, especially being here in South Africa. Some people ask me, you know, why South Africa? Why, you know, Tanzania seems so lovely. And yes, Tanzania was lovely. And this channel is called Ashley in Africa. I'm exploring the continent. And while I never have an intention of doing any level of comparison, I really try to stray away from that. I simply share economic position for people that I work with that are entrepreneurs and investors and professionals that are coming over to establish their business, grow their business, inject money, finances, um, economic opportunities into the local economies. I want to share what my perspective is um, as an economic developer, as an economist, as a businesswoman, and also as a mom, right? As a woman who is raising two daughters and, you know, has an investment in where she does that in systems that are developing and have an opportunity for growth and innovation. So I share that. I do not share with the intention of comparing countries or comparing cultures because, we don't do that here. I provide that level of value to the people that I work with and ultimately the people that watch this content. So if you find the content valuable, please be sure to like it. You know, I must speak about the African Leader Summit also in this. You know, December was a very busy month. That happened. I did watch what was available for share. And if you're not interested in that part, feel free to fast forward or click onto the next video. But for those that are looking to hear my feedback from the US Africa Leader Summit, here goes. First things first, I'll share some of the pros, what I loved about it, and then some of the considerations as an American citizen. And you'll also learn that on the channel, I don't necessarily speak politically about different climates where the countries that I'm in because I'm not a citizen. I don't have the right to vote. I don't have the right to enact change outside of economically. So I don't speak on the political space, but I do when it comes to things that are happening in America and specifically as it pertains to the continent. And so when watching the US African Leaders Summit, I felt like the logo and the graphic design was really good. Um, it looked great actually, the logo was really nice. Um, the programming seems great. Um, they did feel the need to make that programming public by YouTube. I'll be sure to link some of those below. They didn't allow you to comment, but they did let it, they were allowing it to be public. Um, they shared the things that we're working with in YALI, which is the Young African Leadership Institute or Young African Leadership Institute, right? Did I say that properly? And I like that because I actually wasn't formally introduced to YALI, but I knew, I do know two South Africans that were a part of that program um, where they were born in South Africa and they ended up doing their graduate studies or their postgraduate studies in the U.S. through the YALI program. So it was really interesting to hear about what has been going well with that program. The considerations, on the other hand, 
were pretty dense. And I will say this, um, you know, being here on the ground, you see who is leading the charge from a foreign perspective on the continent of Africa and who is simply exasperating resources, right? Who is coming, creating scenarios and mining resources, right? You see other countries that are here, that are creating businesses, that are taking risks, that are investing in the economic development of the continent. And I will say that that's just not us from the U.S., right? We're not doing that. We have historically done the latter. And it sounds like that continues to be the strategy of the U.S. when it comes to Africa, even with this African Leadership Summit. The first things were the headlines, you know, America courts Africa, makes pledges, promises investments. Pledges are promises. They are not commitments. They are not investment deals. They are not closed equity engagements, right? Promises and pledges are essentially the same thing. And we know how great America is in keeping their promises to people of the melanated position, right? So uh, other headlines, the U.S. offers aid, uh, hints at visits. You know, there was media, there were pictures, photo ops. Of course, the beloved President Barack Obama made several appearances during this time. Um, there were no other former presidents involved in this summit. President Barack Obama was the only president that was present during this summit. And, you know, we just have to consider these things, right? Wonder why these things are happening, why he is being positioned and used specifically for this summit. It's also clear to note that this summit was held during the recess of Congress. Right. So Congress was not in the building. They were on holiday. They were in recess during this major global geopolitical summit. Congress makes all of the decisions when it comes to um, money being spent from the U.S. tax dollars. So for these pledges and these promises to be made sounds nice, but without Congress being in the room to have a position or to at least being around to hear potential policies being made. It's extremely difficult to assume that this is going to go anywhere beyond the pomp and circumstance of this actual event, right? And so, you know, that's just simply my position. Um, there was an ambassador, Arikana Chichambori Kwao, I hope I said that properly. She's the founder of the African Diaspora Development Institute. I will link some of her fantastic content below. You may have seen her here on YouTube. She's one of the most powerful um, powerhouse women leadership representatives, leaders on the continent that is speaking for the unification of the diaspora. And I love what she said. She is remarkable. She is provocative. And she was challenging um, this experience as well. So I want to just share a couple of things that she talked about um, here. And I will also link that video below for you to see. If this is helpful, please be sure to like the content um, and share it with someone who would find value in it as well. And if you're interested in understanding how to invest or start business here on the continent and understand more about how BRICS is influencing the future of global business, I'm going to tell you at the end of the video. All right, so let's jump into what uh, Ambassador Arikana Shichambori Kwao had to say, right? So I want to point out maybe three key things that really stuck out to me. Um, and she said, you know, racism and disrespect was really at the foundation of this event. Um, you know, it was in the way in which the Americans and its system interact with Africa and the descendants of Africans, right? Like that existence of racism and disrespect of Africans and the descendants of Africans is within the thread of the way that America operates. And how did this play out? 
Well, there was no agenda. As Ambassador Arakana said, there was no agenda. There was simply an invitation to come to the U.S. and hear the U.S. talk their talk, right? They invited several, you know, I think the, the, the powerful talking heads to speak, the president of Ghana, who is known for being, you know, very eloquent and at the same time very author authoritative, very authoritative, not anti-authoritarian, but authoritarian. There we go. Very authoritarian in the way he speaks and um, very direct with a level of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? He's very direct with a level of, why can't I think of it? What are these guys up there? You know. He knows how to he knows how to say the thing without saying the thing. But if you're listening, you know what he's saying. Diplomatic. There we go. That's it. Diplomatic. But he says what he says and he means what he says. And I feel like his communication is very much, you know, he's slowly challenging and speaking to the power in a way that they understand while moving in a way that they really don't understand. So that's near here. That's an extra part of the conversation, but he did speak, right? But there wasn't an option or an invitation for all of the presidents who were invited to speak. Um, and so it's her position was, this is more of a come here, let's tell you why you should work with us, as opposed to the way that China and Russia have traditionally done business with a continent where they come to the continent. Example, them hosting the BRICS Summit 2023 and appointing uh, President Ramaphosa as the advisor or the executive of the BRICS Council this year, right? So very stark differences. And there hasn't been an American president to visit the continent since our beloved President Barack Obama, who visited his homeland of Kenya, right? His historical homeland um as a descendant of a kenyan and yeah i think that was a huge point that she noted and i will say you know one of the things that i love that she talked about was the brain drain that we hear a lot about and it just made me feel really connected to her as you know a ambassador and the founder of the africa diaspora development institute where she talked about this brain drain having happened over 400 years ago, beginning with the best and the brightest and the strongest who were taken then from the land of Africa. Um, leaders are now currently aware of the strength of the diaspora and they are working diligently to create a bridge and figuring out a way to make it easier for African Americans to return to the continent. Um, and so, you know, with that, these diasporans that are being invited back, these diasporas that are coming back, like me and some of the people that I work with and that I help in the Africa Investors Academy, we are seeing the problems as our own. We're not looking at it like they're, those are their problems, right? We are invested from an indigenous perspective, from a historical perspective, from a spiritual perspective. And to hear Ambassador Arakana speak about this in a way um, that was just so, uh, it, it, it connected to the conversation totally separate from the, the U S Africa summit. It was like, you know, she meant to bring that up in a very intentional way because this summit they did, they invited African Americans, they invited African migrants living in the U S I want to say there were a lot of African migrants. And one of the things that I did love about the summit was the Africa and Diaspora Youth Leaders Forum. So there were two separate panels that happened. I cared more for one of them than the other, but I will talk about the one that I cared for because we talk about what works and what uh, illuminates the goal, right? 
So again, I will be sure to leave a link to some information on the Africa Diaspora Development Institute. There is an event coming this year. I definitely look forward to attending. If you are with or have a relationship with Ambassador Arikana, be sure to connect her and I would love to be invited, but I'm planning on attending anyway. Um, but yeah, let's talk about this African and Diaspora Youth Leaders Forum that I liked. So there were two. The one that I am going to speak about is the one that did not have some famous actors and people that I think are a bit disconnected from the actual problems that exist on the continent and those that are solving them. So this is the second leadership forum that was held. Um, it was uh, the Africa and Diaspora Youth Leaders Creative Industries Breakout Session, and it was called Owning the Narrative, Film, Television, and Music, Engines for Culture, Economy, and Growth. And while many people have their position on how um, African Americans or Africans in general are simply leveraging content to create economy, I think it's a powerful tool that we as Africans have um, a strength in, right? We, we're, we're great in connecting to our culture and essentially we need to feel connected to our culture. That is how we thrive in places and that is why places like the U.S. do so much in creating culture, talking about the culture and do it for the culture and there are platforms that are pushing the culture that aren't even owned by the culture because they understand the importance of the presence of culture in a society to retain their top talent or their highest spenders or their biggest earners, right? Culture is a really big part of the economic engine that drives growth. And so this conversation was about strengthening the capacity of building systems with long-term vision, um, talking about building um, industries and how that takes time. Um, and there are several people, I will connect their Instagrams below. I reached out to them on Instagram, just was like excited about their talk. They reconnected with me um, and followed me back. So I was really excited about that to really see what they're doing and everything in tourism and content. And um, they were great. They were really the most enjoyable part of that summit. And so if you have an interest in building your business, growing your business or investing in projects on the continent in any of the areas that I talked about, I want to invite you to join the Africa Investors Academy. We are a community of entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, professionals, and investors. We are, you know, creating a community for the highest group, highest growing group of entrepreneurs in the U.S. We're building a bridge, you know, and a platform for the African diaspora um, that is sending over $70 billion a year home. One of the questions that was asked during the summit was, is there a platform to do that? And ironically, this was like three weeks after I had launched the Africa Investors Academy. So what we're building, I know, is something that everyone that has an interest in coming to the continent, doing business on the continent, eventually living on the continent is looking for. And that's what we've created in the Africa Investors Academy. So we'd love to see you in the academy. Please be sure to click the link below and join us. We just released our Q1 events where we'll be talking about growing your business with video marketing, growing your international business with video marketing, getting invested and started in investing um, in real estate here in South Africa, as well as the future of education and jobs on the continent with the founder of Alt Schools based in Nigeria. Um, so we're so excited about what we're doing this year in 2023, and we'd love to have you in the community. So if that sounds interesting to you, come on and join us, and we'll see you there. Until the next video, we'll see you soon.